Hello, and welcome to NextStar's video series on the Salesforce Developer Workbooks. In this track, we'll be walking you through the Visual Force Workbook. This video covers Chapter 3, Understanding Simple Variables and Formulas. So far, we've only been experimenting with static pages. In general, Visual Force pages are dynamic. Visual Force is designed to work with different users and data sources to display dynamic data. To add some dynamic functionality to our Visual Force pages, today we're going to learn variables and formulas. This tutorial introduces you to variables, formulas, and the expression language syntax used in Visual Force. Variables typically contain data that you've retrieved from objects in the force.com database, such as the current user. We'll also touch on the basics of formulas in Visual Force. To begin, I'm going to demonstrate how to use global variables in Visual Force. I'm going to start with a blank page in Visual Force and add a reference to a global variable. You can access global variables using the following format curly brace, exclamation point, space, dollar sign, and then the name of whichever global variable you'd like to reference. In my case, I'm going to choose the first name of the currently logged in user. I'm going to go ahead and save that. Since I'm the one that's logged in, it should say Walter. So, the most important thing about global variables and variables in general in Visual Force is the format you use when you do reference them. The curly brace exclamation point lets Visual Force know that anything enclosed within those braces is dynamic and needs to be processed at runtime. Next, I'm going to demonstrate some basic formulas and functions with Visual Force. To start, I'm going to add on to the example from the first section by using an ampersand, a set of quotes, and closing a space, and another ampersand. Then I'm going to reference the global variable for the currently logged in user's last name. this will do, we'll create a continuous string of the user's first name, then a space, then the user's last name. I'm going to go ahead and save this. See my first and last name together. And that's the result of this very basic formula. Another good example of a basic formula would be to include something like today's date. I'm going to add a paragraph block here for, to wrap some text in. To say today's date Oops. is now we're calling a very basic visual force function that'll tell us the current day. So now that I've added that, I'm going to go ahead and save it. added the current day right on the Visual Force page. Now we can take this another step further and perform some operations on the results of the today function. For example, copy this line and we'll have it calculate what the date will be next week. So we'll take the results of today and add 7. I'm going to go ahead and save that. See that we've incremented the date by 7 and telling us what the date will be next week in the following launch. So adding on to this, we can do some really cool things with the built-in functions in Visual Force. Just to give you a few examples. This string will find the max of a given array of values. So calling max against this whole array of values, go ahead and hit save. And the maximum is six. So that's using another one of the library functions in Visual Force. Um, another very useful one when you're doing uh, 
some more difficult calculations. So we've got the square root function. Go ahead and save that. And the square root of 49 is 7. And then one of the things I find very useful is the contains function that lets you search strings for certain set of substrings. So in this case, is this true? Does salesforce.com contain force.com as a substring? And we go ahead and save that. And the contains function returns true because it does in fact contain force.com. So that's kind of an introduction to some of the basic formulas and functions available in Visual Force. So the last thing I'd like to cover in this tutorial is how to add conditional logic to Visual Force pages. So in the last few steps I showed you how to use various functions and formulas in the Visual Force page. Now let's add some conditional logic so we can control what shows up on the page when. This last line, I'm going to edit this and turn this into a conditional rather than just a uh, library function call. So I say if so if salesforce.com contains the substring force.com, I'm going to have it say Yep. And if it doesn't, I'm going to have it say nah. So in this conditional, if this function returns true, I'll get this as a result. If it returns false, I'll get this as a result. So if I go ahead and click save, we'll see. I should see a yep. Is it true? Yep. And now just to demonstrate what it would look like if it was not found in the string, I'm going to go ahead and add an X there, click save, and now we've got nah. So that's a very simple example of how to add conditional logic to Visual Force pages and make them a little bit smarter. Now I'm going to do another example with a little bit of math in it, so I'm going to go ahead and add a block here and say if so if today in the day's date is after the 14th I'm gonna have it say that yes it's after the 14th And if it's not, say it's on or before the 14th. So what we're doing here is we're calling the today function in Visual Force. We're asking it for just the day, and we're evaluating to see if the day value is greater than 14. If it is, it'll tell us that our current date is after the 14th. And if we're not, it's going to say we're on or before the 14th, given that we're using a greater than uh, conditional. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And since on April 24th, we should see, yes, we are in fact after the 14th of the month. So that's been our introduction to simple variables and formulas in Visual Force. In our next video, we'll cover Chapter 4, Using Standard Controllers. Thank you for joining us. For more great content, click to follow us on Google+. Thank you.